afternoon, YouTube. This is Angie here at Abundant Acres Homestead, and today I am going to be canning one of my absolute favorite things to can with our tomatoes, and that is spaghetti sauce. So I have a whole bunch in front of me to be cutting up and ready to can, but this isn't all of it um, for a while now. One thing with the uh, heirloom tomatoes is they don't always come on all at once so you get a few here you get a few there and what I've been doing up until now I've been freezing them. Spaghetti sauce the slicers I would actually core it and cut it in quarters smaller sections and pop it in the freezer bag and then for the sauce tomatoes I just cut the ends off obviously I wash all the tomatoes but I just cut the ends off and cut it into smaller sections. And again, just pop it into a freezer bag. Lately, our tomatoes have been coming on really good. So I actually have a pretty good chunk of them here ready to go. These are the Oleon Red, Ole Ron Red Plums that I got. I'm actually really impressed with these. They are kind of like in between a slicer and a sauce. Here, let me cut it in half. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside. So, it's a lot like a slicer, but you can tell there's not a whole lot of seeds in it. Now, the sauce tomatoes, I don't do much more than just cut them up into smaller chunks. And then, the slicer tomatoes, I actually core out just like I would if I was freezing. I would core it out and then slice it also into smaller chunks. Now with the slicer, sometimes they can be pretty seedy. So sometimes if they have a lot of seeds, I will just go ahead and pull the seeds out. You don't have to, but I do if they have a lot of seeds. Here's one of the big ox heart tomatoes. Give you an idea of what they look like on the inside because I've gotten quite a few emails of asking about the ox hearts. So this would be a perfect video to just show you. This is what an ox heart looks like on the inside. There's not a whole lot of seed. This kind of will show you. Pretty much a big, gigantic sauce tomato. Let me get all these cut up and then I will be back and show you the frozen tomatoes that I'm going to be adding to it and exactly what I do with that as well. So I pulled these out of the freezer yesterday and I'm ready to go ahead and use those and I'm going to go ahead and start them on this sauce. One of the things I wanted to show you why this is one of my favorite ways to do tomatoes is because if you can see here there is a lot of juice and most of it is just water. So if you freeze them then what you have the option to do is to actually pour most of the water content out, which means you won't have to boil it down as long to get a thicker paste. And that doesn't mean that you have to use, lose all of this juice. You can actually can the juice as well. But for the sauce, I want to get out as much of the water as I can and just leave me with the papers. I've got it set on about 350. I'm just gonna cover it up and I'm just gonna let it cook down. You could just put all of this in a great big pot on the stove and cook it on about a medium low temperature and just keep stirring to make sure that it doesn't stick. But I actually really like these roasters because I can kind of just set it and forget it. Another thing you could do if you wanted, instead of actually using this, is you could use the insert that I had over there and you could just put it in the oven and you could cook it that way too. Just make sure that you have it really, really low and you'll have to check that a lot more. Um, and if you have smaller batches, you could do it in a crock pot. It'll work the same way, but I've got a lot. So this just makes things easier for me. And in a perfect world, I would have started this early, early in the morning, but I don't live in a perfect world. So we are at two o'clock in the afternoon. So this is probably going to be a two day event because 
tonight. This is just going to be quick. As I now. check on this, I will check back with you and just kind of give you updates as it goes along until we get to the finished product. Turn the temperature up to 400 degrees just because I'm kind of getting in a hurry. So I'll have to check it more often, but I just keep coming in occasionally and doing a little bit of a smash and a little bit of a mix. Then when they get all soft, we'll be back. Okay, here we go. It's been going for about two hours. You can see it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's boiling, but you can tell it's getting good and hot, and it's hot all the way through. Texture-wise, it's all pretty soft, so next step is to shut this off, and we're going to let it cool down, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the sauce cooled down, and we are getting ready to run it through the strainer. Um, we have the old one. I don't even know how old it is. Scoop this up. It goes right in this bowl. And then my gasket kind of leaks. Oh, just an old one. Need a new gasket for this. So if you guys know of where to get a new one, let me know. Here's where we put it in. He's cranking it. And what it's doing is there is a coil type thing inside there that is turning and all the juices is coming out this side. I just kind of want to scrape as we go. So you can see it is just squeezing out this. And then the juice and everything runs in here. The seeds and the skin runs out this side. And once we get all of this ran through, we'll have this type of juice. Okay, I got that all rinsed out. This is the first batch of juice that we ran through. Okay, I'm gonna get this cleaned off and then we're gonna run all of this back through so that I can show you why we run it back through because there's actually quite a bit of stuff left in this. Okay, so that's kind of sort of cleaned off-ish. And now we're just gonna take the castings that came out and we're gonna run it back through all over again. Quite a bit more. You can see there's already more coming out. This is what we've gotten out of that second squeeze. You'll be able to see it is quite a bit thicker. Okay, now we got pure tomato sauce in here. So what I'm gonna do is take this back over, plug it back in, and we're just gonna let this keep cooking until it reduces. Okay, next morning, and it's been going for, I don't know, about an hour. Cooked about two hours last night. Still pretty runny compared to what I like it. So I'm gonna crank it up to 400 and let her cook. Okay, several hours later, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is about where we started. You can see where it kind of separates around the edge. but it's not super watery anymore. I wouldn't say it's chunky, but you can tell it is a lot, a lot thicker. But I gotta cook down some. Now it's time to start adding stuff to it. And this is where it gets difficult for me because I don't measure for pretty much anything that I cook. So I'm just gonna have to guesstimate and I will try to bring you closer so that you can kind of get an idea and maybe you guys can do a better guess. But I'm gonna start with this many onions. And when I say start with, um, what that means is, it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be adding to it later on, but whatever I add, I'll be sure to show you so that maybe by the end of it, we can come up with a recipe. But this is all chopped onions. 
and I'm gonna use the whole thing. So I don't know if I had to guess, I'd say might be three-ish green peppers. You know what, why don't I just measure? Okay, let's try a rough measurement, see if I can figure it out. Okay, so green peppers, let's see, I'm gonna do, Three, four. Let's see what that looks like after I stir it. I oh, want more than that. Okay. My tripod thing just popped y'all off and threw you on your head. Okay, so this is about what six cups looks like. And that's about right, ish. So we'll see if I need to add more. But my tripod's not working, so now I've gotta to try to find a new place for you guys. Okay, let's try this. Okay, next up is gonna be garlic. And I will be using all of this. Now this is just minced garlic. I got one, two tablespoons. Two, three. It's not quite four. I'm just gonna pour it all the rest of the way in there. So I'm gonna say I've put, by the time I scrape all the sides off, a good five tablespoons maybe. I hope you guys are paying attention because then maybe you guys can give me a recipe to my own stuff bonus points for anybody that can write the recipe down and put it in the comments below. Not just for you guys to follow, but for me to follow as well. Okay. Italian seasoning. I will be using quite a bit of this, so one, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and go with four decent sized tablespoons of that. Next is gonna be oregano, and I will put about half as much oregano. Two tablespoons of oregano. I have fennel seed. I think fennel seed will make a pasta sauce. Like make or break kind of thing. Fennel will definitely make. Let's see, there's one, two, Gonna go ahead and go with three tablespoons of fennel. I'm gonna let it cook down some more so that all of the goodness kind of gets in. I'm just gonna get this all mixed up and then I'm gonna let everybody play in the pool together for a little while and then we'll be back. And if I add anything, I will be sure to bring you back and show you what I'm adding because I guarantee I'm gonna be adding more onions and garlic. Well, garlic, maybe, I don't know. But I guarantee I'm gonna be adding more onions. So when I do that, I'll be sure to bring you back so that you guys can be paying attention and writing this recipe down for me. Definitely needs more onions and garlic. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, the sauce isn't quite where I want it, so I'm adding another onion, chopped. And just to knock some of the acidic down, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of just regular white sugar. I'm also gonna add one good teaspoon of black pepper. Now, I wouldn't exactly call this my finished spaghetti sauce because obviously it doesn't have any meat in it. I would definitely be adding ground beef and pepperoni. I will say making homemade spaghetti sauce is a bit more acidic than what you would find in an actual jar like in a grocery store and that's because you're using real tomatoes not tomato flavoring. A little bit too acidic. There is a few things that you can do. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to just add like beef bouillon and it takes some of it down and you could also add maybe just like a teaspoon of uh, baking soda and the baking soda will lower the pH, so.
but I'll warn you, when you drop that in there, it does bubble up. So yeah, just a little fair warning. This is pretty much the finished project. Now I've just got to get it in jars and get it processed. I know this video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna just try to make it short and sweet. I'm gonna be doing these in quart jars. So what I'll do is I will just add two to three basil leaves. You don't have to add it, but I have basil, so I'm going to. But I'll add two to three leaves per jar and then two tablespoons of lemon juice, or you could use half a teaspoon, I think it is, of citric acid per jar, one or the other. You don't have to use both. Um, put the sauce in, and then I will process them for 40 minutes, and then we have spaghetti sauce ready to go.